Please welcome Dr. Terence Farrell. Uh, thanks very much, Wendell, and uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, I, I, I always start off these um, meetings by saying that we, we are, as a committee, we are not at all phased by the numbers that we see in front of us. Whether there are two people or 200 people, it doesn't matter. Uh, what, what, what we are doing is that we are making ourselves available to the national community uh, to, to have your voices heard on the question of constitutional reform. Um, I, I, all of us here, we, 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 we are born, we start to go to school, uh, and at some point in time, you get to age 18, or in fact, when, in, in, when, I, when I was younger, you would have been age 21, and then you heard about having the right to vote and going and, and, and voting. The point I mean is that you, you, you grow up within a system and we do things almost automatically within that system. We come to understand that there are political parties and that these political parties run for office and then they elect a prime minister and then there's a president and, 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 and there's Bacchanal in the parliament and then there's conflict between the president and the, 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 the Auditor General and the Attorney General and so on and so forth. And, 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 and we, we grew up in, this, in, in a system and we kind of know it, it's there. But very few of us actually take the time to look at the document called the Constitution, which actually sets up all of these institutions which govern our lives. And we don't because the Constitution is, in fact, a legal document. It's, it's law. And there are a bunch of people, lawyers, <laughs> whose job it is to look at the Constitution and to deal with it when problems arise. And in fact, I would tell you that 95% of lawyers are not familiar with the contents of the Constitution because they simply don't deal with it on a daily basis. And there are another 5% of lawyers who they are specialists in the Constitution and what it provides. So when there are issues around the public service and the Public Service Commission and public servants are appealing up to the Privy Council and so on, all of those things are things which are emanating out of the Constitution. When people are, uh, 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 go to court because there's some kind of, of um, they're challenging the breach of their, of their constitutional rights, that is coming out of the Constitution. Now, I must say, we don't, we don't think about it. We live it because it's just, we, we, just, we just live it. And we say, this is the system that we have. And very often, we have a sense that the system really isn't working very well. So you might be voting for a particular political party. And as happened, I mean, I look, I look at the age of the audience here. And I know in 1981, people would have voted for the ONR. The ONR got 91,000 votes and not a single seat. And people would have had that experience and they would have wondered, well, how is that? What, that, that doesn't strike us as being very fair. That doesn't strike us as being right. So there are many things like that and these things go back to the Constitution because there is a section of the Constitution which says how we vote. It says we run the first past the post system. That's it. And we, we, we grew up with it, and we very often don't question it until something happens that causes us to question it. The point I'm making is that this document, this constitution that we have here, is a 1976 document. It came about because Eric Williams at the time, this is in the wake of the Black Power Movement, in the wake of the Regiment Mutiny, in the wake of considerable social unrest that went back to 1969, some of us here might remember, the bus strike and so on, a lot of turbulence. We had high unemployment in the country. And there was a no vote campaign in 1971. You remember that um, Ian R. Robinson left the PNM in, 19, in 1970, formed his own party, the ACDC at the time. There was a no vote campaign which Robinson led in 1971. And in that election, the PNM won all of us. All 26 seats were won by the PNM until 
Roy Richardson um, became leader of the opposition. And, when, and William seized that opportunity to have the Wooding Commission look at the Constitution as part of that process. The Wooding Commission met from 1972 to early 1974. They carried out meetings and town halls all over the country. And they came up with what is, quite frankly, a wonderful document. A number of meaningful changes. Two, two. A number of, 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 of significant changes to how we voted, for example. They recommended proportional representation. They recommended that we abolish the Senate and that we have one a unicameral system. A number of, of, of important changes. They recommended changes to the, to, the, to, to the right section. They recommended that there be a section dealing with citizens' duties and responsibilities. But Eric Williams looked at what they presented and he said, I'm not going to do that. And he essentially took the wording report and he put it in a bottom drawer and he got Ellis Clark, we believe, not quite sure, Ellis Clark to write what is essentially the 1976 constitution. And that's the constitution that we have today. There have been a couple of amendments, the Crossing of the Floor Act, and there were some amendments relating to the service commission. There's an amendment in 2006 related to the police service commission and the selection of a police commissioner. But the point is that that constitution that was put in place in 1976 made only a few changes to the 1962 independence constitution. What we did? We went from a governor general to a president. We took away some of the powers from the prime minister, and we gave those powers to the president, those essentially powers of appointment. But essentially, this 1976 constitution we have is, if you look at it, the same pretty much as the 1962 independence constitution. And that is a constitution that was given to us by the British at independence. So here we are in 2024, and we are dealing with a set of institutions of government that are essentially 60-something 60, 60 years old. It's worse than that because, in fact, some of the institutions which were put into our constitution, like the service commissions, were set up by the British in Trinidad in the 1950s. And it's very interesting to note that many Commonwealth countries, former British colonies, became independent, and changed a lot of those institutions. Singapore changed them, Canada changed them, New Zealand changed them. But we still operating with a constitution that effectively dates back to 1962. And one of the points that we try to make is that a lot of the problems that we are experiencing here today in this society go back to this document that we are trying to operate, the institutions that it has set up, that we are trying to operate those institutions, is like trying to drive our old car, right? Trying to get it to run, and, 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 and we can't get it to run. It's not working well. The problems that we are seeing with crime, the ineffectiveness of the police service, the problems with the public service, the questions of the power of the, of the prime minister, people are complaining about the election of the president. All these things are coming out of this document, which is 60-something years old, more than 60-something years old, right? And every administration that we have had has attempted to change it. This is the fifth time that we are attempting to change this constitution. The NAR tried to change it. They instituted the Higher Tally Commission in 1987, which worked for a couple of years. It was interrupted by the 1990 attempted coup. Nothing came of that. The Pandey administration made some important changes to legislation affecting the Constitution, like the Freedom of Information Act, Judicial Review Act, the Integrity in Public Life Act, because the Integrity Commission is set up in the Constitution. And so we had the Integrity in Public Life Act, which essentially elaborates how the Integrity Commission works. That was under the Pandey administration. The Manning administration came in in 2001, 2002, 
and it too embarked on a process of constitutional reform. Manning asked Ellis Clark to write a draft constitution. Some of you may remember that, the one where we talked about being an executive president. And Ellis Clark did that draft. And then there was a bunch of businessmen and trade union people and religious leaders, including the archbishop and uh, um, some other religious leaders, trade unionists, and so on, the Principles of Fairness Committee, who in 2006 did a draft constitution. And the UNC in 2013 had the Ramadan Committee, which went around the country much as we are doing or we have been doing, <clears throat> came up with a report to, for constitutional reform. Every administration has been attempting to do constitutional reform. Why? Because this, the constitution is flawed. It's no longer working. So this is the fifth time <clears throat> that we are doing it. And some people will say, well, this is a political ploy, it's a political gimmick on the part of the government. Be that as it may, if it is, that's what it is. But my view is, our view is as a committee, is that this is an opportunity for the population, for the people of Trinidad and Tobago to now say what we want change in this constitution. We told the Wooding Commission what changes we wanted. We told Hayatali what changes we wanted. The Principles of Fairness articulated changes we wanted. The Ramana Committee outlined changes we wanted. And we are going to be putting together some report, a report with recommendations from you in terms of what you want to see in the constitution. And the situation today in 2024, even though Ramadan was only 2013, the situation today that is facing your children and your grandchildren is profoundly different from even what the Ramadan committee was looking at in 2013. We're not talking about AI. We're not talking about, about questions of access to personal data. We're not talking about deep fakes. We're not talking, we're not talking about climate change. And those are the kinds of things that our children and our grandchildren are going to have to face in the world that is coming up. And we need to have a constitution and a set of institutions that can respond to that. That's why this is important. So we invite you to make your voices heard. We want to hear from you. We've been all around the country. This is the second to last town hall that we're having. We are meeting with some of the young people again in Port of Spain on Saturday. We go back to Tobago next week for another meeting with the young people in Tobago. Uh, and we would have covered the country in terms of these kinds of meetings. We would have received almost 900 submissions via email from the public. And we would have received a number of submissions from civil society organizations, from political parties and so on that have come into us. So we have all of that material. We want to hear your voices here in Diego Martin this evening. And we look forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you.